What's your definition of greed? Oh, goodness. That's, wow. Okay. Um, definition of greed is really, I think when you lose sight of why you're creating your abundance, because it's not about the abundance being bad. This is the biggest misnomer, right? Everyone's like, money's bad, money's evil, people who make money are greedy. And it's like, that's completely wrong and false. It's not about the abundance. It's like, what do you do with it? Like, why are you creating it? Hello and welcome to Activating Greatness. I'm Nathan Crane, an award-winning author, documentary filmmaker, and health and wellness expert. And I'm Derek Crane, a certified personal trainer, health and fitness coach, and trainer of professional athletes. Each week, we broadcast new episodes with experts on life, health, fitness, business, and leadership to help you manifest the greatness that's already within you. Activating Greatness is about helping you live your life to your fullest potential and live with more meaning, purpose, health, and fulfillment. In this episode, we're talking with Kimberly Masca about spirituality and money. Sometimes a very polarizing topic as we, as we know, yet it's so important for all of us who are here to awaken and enliven while also wanting to enjoy and appreciate the wealth that's available to anyone and everyone, including you, me, and Kimberly, everyone tuning in to this podcast. So this is going to be a really good episode. Um, we're also talking about how spiritual coaches and spiritual entrepreneurs can share their gifts, helping people and the planet while creating abundance and living the life they were meant to live. Kimberly Mask is the publisher of Spiritual Biz Magazine and creator of Spiritual Biz Bootcamp. She uses her business and marketing expertise to show spiritual entrepreneurs how to make money while they meditate. TM, that's trademark, by the way, and we are going to talk about what that means in a little bit. She brings 20 years of business development experience to the table, including eight years on Wall Street, and she marries her business expertise with her love for consciously creating life, and she shows spiritual coaches how to create financial abundance with their gifts while serving their clients at the highest level. It's her sole purpose to help 5,000 spiritual entrepreneurs create 5,000 businesses in the next five years. We're going to find out exactly what that means for you as well. And before we dive into this incredible episode, we want to thank our sponsors for helping make it possible for you. Performance tea is something both Derek and I drink and love. One thing we really like about it is that it's handcrafted in small batches and made of the best medicinal herbs. We're both huge believers and consumers of herbs and love the healing benefits that herbal medicine brings to the body. Go to performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. They have incredible teas for energy, focus, recovery, and balance. Again, that's performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount today. So if you're ready to activate your greatness and your deeper levels of abundance and purpose, then let's dive into this inspiring episode. Kimberly, hey, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. So first question, why this goal? Where did this come from? This 5,000 spiritual entrepreneurs creating 5,000 businesses in five years. Yeah, the goal. Um, I don't have a really great answer except for it's not probably the best answer ever is that it was really just inspiration, which is our connection with source. And I was thinking about how do we have the ripple effect? How do we really have a major impact? Because I know everybody wants to have an impact in one way or another. We try to figure out how do we do that? So I thought if I can step out with this big goal where some people might say like, wow, how are you going to do that? But if I can step out with that and own that goal and just be focused on the goal, I know I'll hit it. And so I'm, I put it out there and it's, uh, it's catchy too because people want to know about it and what does that mean. But it's the way that I could see of having a ripple effect, of having a major, major ripple effect on the planet is that by helping all these people who have these amazing gifts and ideas and way to 
help others because for every person they have that person shifts their vibration and their vibration impacts the next person and their family and their friends and it's just it's the biggest way to have the biggest impact so are you working with uh more people who who have these who have gifts to share but don't have businesses yet and want to help them build businesses or also people who already have businesses and help them want to build businesses? A little of both. We seem to attract both, um, which is pretty cool. There's so many people awakening that they say, I have this information or they're receiving, a lot of people call them downloads, they're channeling. I find a lot of channelers are very attracted to me. I've, I've been told by various, um, sources which is all coming from source that that i am actually the person that's here to help the channeler step out with their message so there's people that have been getting this information and and don't know what to do with it and so i'm able to show them how to create the business and then i have quite a few clients who have a business and they're trying to figure out how do i make it bigger how do i you know make more than a couple thousand a month doing this? How do I, you know, go to the 10, 20, 50,000 a month area? So I'm showing them how to do that. And then people that also, it's fun. This is probably the most fun and interesting client is that they already have books and they already have say a podcast or they have um, maybe a, a big Instagram following or something like that and, or a radio show, but they're not able to monetize it. And so I'm able to show them how to tap into the audience they've created and, and really begin to monetize them. That's fun because those guys really skyrocket. It's cool. <laughs> so tell us about uh, your experience at Wall Street. What was that like? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer already. <laughs> it was, you know, it was amazing because we, what percentage of people could say they worked on Wall Street? It was pretty, it was pretty cool. It was an amazing company. There are some brilliant minds there. It's just the vibration was off with what we were doing. And I didn't really know any better at the time because I was like, work, work, work. You're in this corporate arena. It was just, I was sucked into all of it as well. And then it was fun because I worked for a couple of major um, Wall Street firms and then nine of us left had inspiration and started our own company. So we started our own broker dealer um, that we took from sitting in a living room with nine of us pulled together money, got some funding and stuff. And, and we took it to $165 million company. So that was pretty awesome. There's not a lot of people that can say they've got done that, had that under their belt. So it was an incredible experience. Um, but at some point I was just completely out of balance. I was, um, I think the word would be miserable. And um, even though from the outside, everything looked phenomenal, I had an apartment on Fifth Avenue and I could go shopping and I traveled the world and I bought an apartment in Paris and like all this stuff that sounded like really amazing. But inside I was just not in a very good, in good space at all. So I learned a ton it gave me what I needed. So I see why I was there. I see all the experiences. I'm able to bring that knowledge and expertise forward um, in helping people create their own businesses. But overall, I mean, it was an amazing experience. I'm not going to like knock it, but at some point I was like, I can't do this anymore and made the decision to leave, which was really interesting because we had like birthed this thing, this company, and I made the decision to leave before the market even turned. And so that was tough, but probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. So within that company, what would you say was the biggest mistake and also the biggest success within it? <laughs> so, huh. so, um, so I would say the biggest mistake was greed um, because we had had our books clear. We knew the whole market crash was coming. We had an awareness, but some greed took over. And when the greed took over, we ended up in the hole. So there were some decisions, poor decisions made and decisions that weren't made in a team effort. It was made more individual. And so some of the part, not all partners were aware of what was happening. It was just one of those things. So that would be the, were you, were you guys in real estate? Were you in the real estate? We traded mortgage backed securities. Gotcha. So that's like exactly what blew up. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It was, a, it was the same time I was actually getting my real estate license too. Ah. and hanging out with some pretty shady people I found out after that were, you know, part of that whole thing. So the whole thing. So we traded those and I, you know, I would say that we weren't 
directly involved. And I also, you know, that's an interesting topic. I always say we're a hundred percent responsible for what we create and what we do. So even for the people signing the documents, you're still responsible. You still need to have an awareness, but yes, there were some people guiding people in the wrong way, all based off of greed, which was really fascinating um, to watch that go down. That was probably the biggest mistake. And then the amazing opportunity, like the coolest stuff that we did was just being innovative and, and thinking outside of the box and how do you create this thing that's going to help these people. And, and it was, it was really fun. It was really cool to be able to just create and be focused. And most people would say, you know, it's too hard to create a big company like that and all these employees. And, and so they may shy away just because it feels overwhelming, but when you've got the right people in place and you're able to communicate and talk, it's, it's pretty awesome. So I would say like, give it a go. Like worst case scenario. I remember when I left the major firm that I was working for, um, cause it was like a little exodus that nine of us left right within two weeks. Everybody kind of knew it was happening and you had this big decision to make. Did you stay and work for this major firm and you're secure? sort of right how secure is anything and you have a paycheck and all of that and you're gonna like jump ship to go create something new and I have to say probably 90% of the people I knew thought I was insane they it might even be a greater amount like why would you leave stay here why were you going to create the new company and the same percentage thought I was crazy when I left the company we created because they're like, what if you guys go public? Because we've been looking at that whole process and how much money you're going to lose. I'm like, but I'm miserable. So I think the lesson from that is being able to just be inspired and jump and be inspired and jump, even though you may not know, well, we never know what's actually going to happen. So being that, taking that inspiration and jumping forward and just seeing what happens and making the most of it. <laughs> Trusting that inner voice, right? That intuition. I, I totally relate with what you're saying. I had similar experience when I was uh, basically working in the, the cell phone industry, the wireless industry, worked up, had uh, like six promotions, was offered you know, an executive position at a high level with a very high paycheck, but at the same time was starting to get really sick. My immune system was crashing. I was overloaded. I was stressed. And, and in my that inner voice was like, you need to quit. You need to turn this down. You need to leave this. Otherwise, it's going to kill you. And, you know, I listened. And that can be fearful for, for all of us, right, to listen to that voice because it's the unknown. It's leaving the uncertainty. It's the going into, well, what do I do next? And, and uh, listening to that voice is so important. It sounds like, you know, you've, you've developed that ability uh, quite well, which has led you on this path to becoming a coaches of spiritual coaches, which I want to get into in a little bit about, you know, what is it that led you down this path? What were some of your awakening moments? Um, but I wanted to ask you another question first about um, being a part of that company. What was the, <clears throat> let's see, how do I say it? What was your, your, uh, your biggest takeaway in working with that many people, growing a company that big, and obviously, you know, your health became a priority, your, your taking care of yourself became a priority, but what was your, your deepest takeaway from that? Um, the deepest takeaway from that whole process and just that learning experience is that when you're building a team, you must, I don't care what kind of team it is, sports team, business team, whatever it is, you must see everyone in their highest light and treat them that way. Those are probably not the words I would have used back in the day, but there was within the group um, that I was in, there were some people that were probably going through their own inner turmoil for various reasons that really took it out on other team members. And in hindsight, I look at that and I'm like, wow, I would really have never allowed anyone in my life to treat me that way at a personal level, but in a business level, for some reason it was acceptable. And I think it was acceptable because we're like, well, we're making all this money. We're doing this. We're doing that. Like it's, it's just, it comes with the territory and it doesn't. And I've really taken that into consideration as I'm building my company now. So 
I have a team, I think we're 11 big now, and you know, multi-million dollar company, that how do you grow that team and really have the people that are gonna be true to what you're doing? And I, I just really think it's how we treat people. It's how you treat the people around you, even when you're the quote unquote boss, right? That you have, there's, there's still that fine line of yes, I'm, you're, I don't like to use the word superior because that's not right. But so, you know, you have a different role to play, but really it's how you're treating people, making sure that the people that you bring onto your team can connect with your message. Because when there's a wobble there and you start doing it just because of the paycheck, that's, I think, when things goes, everything goes really bad. That's like hell in a handbasket, right? That's why I think most people are miserable in their jobs. And not necessarily the job that they're doing. It's the, it's the community. It's the people that are around you. And having been in an experience where that was not an ideal situation whatsoever, um, being able to now look and see as I'm growing my company now, how important that is to be able to make sure it's the right people and that everyone's connected and on the same vibration. Yeah, that's, that's so important. And thank you for sharing that. And you mentioned a few minutes ago, you left or what your biggest mistake really in, in that uh, company that you started was greed. The, the team's biggest mistake was greed. What's your definition of greed? Oh, goodness. That's, wow. Okay. Um, definition of greed is really, I think when you lose sight of why you're creating your abundance, because it's not about the abundance being bad. This is the biggest misnomer, right? Everyone's like, money's bad, money's evil, people who make money are greedy. And it's like, that's completely wrong and false. It's not about the abundance. It's like, what do you do with it? Like, why are you creating it? So if you're just creating it because you want more stuff or you want, I don't know, you want to go to Vegas and be able to drop like 50 grand in a weekend, which people I knew used to do that. And that was fun and cool. And they could, and that's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with having amazing, beautiful things. You can see by my background, I love beautiful things. So that is, is part of the process so that you're feeling good, but knowing why you're creating the abundance, what is it for? And when you have a vision of what it's for, then it actually flows easier. And if there's a, an actual energy exchange so that you're doing something amazing and you're getting money back because of that, that energy exchange, because money is just energy, you're getting that exchange back and you're serving and then you're able to to take the abundance that you create and do something with it, do, do something amazing and help people and create businesses where you're paying people's salaries. And it's pretty incredible. But the greed is like when we just lose sight and it becomes just about us. Cause this journey is not just about us. This, we're just so minuscule in it. So having the realization that we're on this bigger journey and everything we do has an impact and a consequence and keeping all that in mind as we go to create our abundance. Beautiful. Thank you. What was a major aha moment to becoming a coach of spiritual coaches? You know, the aha was, it's more of a story. It's, it's, a, it's a bigger aha. Like it wasn't just like an instantaneous moment, but my mom um, transitioned. I say transition. She passed away. It depends on what people's words to use. I like transitioning because they're still here somewhere. So <laughs> some of us can still see them, but some of us can't. So, um, so the, the, the really kind of aha was that I was, even when I left Wall Street, I still, it took me a while to bounce back and find my path. So I would love to say, yeah, yes, I left Wall Street and I suddenly realized this was my path. It just was not that easy. So there was a good no, six, seven years of just trying to figure it out. I flipped houses across the country and did stuff, started another music distribution company, like did things that I thought were the right thing and it just didn't come together. And then basically kind of like how most people go through it, your health starts to suffer, things start to happen. So I started to get more aware of me. And I actually went to a Deepak Chopra like detox week because I knew something was incredibly wrong, but I didn't know what it was. I just knew I was, I was still miserable. I, I removed myself from the situation of Wall Street, but of course I was still the same person. So since I was still the same person, right. I was still going through this stuff. So I did like a week detox type thing and, and I came back 
it was a different person. It was, that was probably the biggest transition. And I started meditating and I started eating in the Ayurvedic way. And I just, just be able to release the emotions and whatever was going on with me personally. And when I came back from that, I was like, Oh, I, I get it now. And I started to really connect with who we are as human beings here and as spiritual beings here on this planet. And having come from how I describe this, my mom and I were incredibly intuitive, like crazy. My mom was an amazing healer, but she never used it as a gift. And she had also carried along, you know, all this baggage that we do as human beings and resentment and whatever all that stuff is that we carry with us. And so I actually watched her basically kill herself in a way. She had cancer when she died, like riddled with cancer. And I know that the cancer came from her thoughts and, and her thoughts creating what she ate. And it was just that big whole tragic mess that we get into. Right. And watching her do that, when I did my shift and I went to the Deepak uh, weekend or week. It was like an eight day, nine day thing. It was amazing. Um, I highly recommend it. And as I was came out of that and I just started consuming all this material. So even though I had been, you know, incredibly intuitive, always was able to know things before they happened and seeing beings that other people may not see that have transitioned. Hey, even though I knew that I hadn't directly connected it to how we were as spiritual beings. And so I started just consuming all of this material and I was getting super clear on, Oh, the importance of our thoughts and, and that that creates our reality and all this started coming in. And I started talking to my mom about it and it was right before she transitioned. And so and when we found out quote unquote, I say we found out she was sick, but she had been sick for a really long time and had kept it from us. She transitioned within 26 days of us finding out. So it was this big personal thing that I went through of seeing where she was, how she'd created her illness. I'm, I, I will go so far as to say that. And that I started to think about like, what if someone could have helped her? What if I had had this information earlier, like years before to get her to see that she didn't have to be so angry and carrying around things from the past. And so I started to think about that. And then while I was on that path of studying more, because I just started to like, again, consume material, go on retreats, as most people do when they're having that kind of official awakening, you're in it. And I was meeting these amazing people that I know could have helped her. And then the business stuff just comes second nature for me. That's truly one of my gifts is I can actually intuitively and visually see someone's business when I meet them. And so I was able to see all these people's businesses and I'm like, well, why aren't you doing that? And I realized how the left brain and the right brain of the spiritual person and the business side wasn't connecting and it was scary for them. And, but they had these amazing gifts. And so I thought, well, this just fell in my lap. And so that's kind of how it happened. It wasn't like a major aha, but it was, but it was a little bit longer. It took a few months and then I, then I was just off and running and I knew what I needed to do. And it's just been very focused to get to where I am. Yeah. I find that the biggest ahas in my life and in many other people's lives that I talk to aren't like an instantaneously awakening. Everything changes at a moment, right? It's all these little ahas, these little awakening moments that build over time that then it's like, oh, now, now you have all the pieces together, right? And yeah. it sounds like you've uh, made, you know, a tremendous uh, journey so far into getting to where you are and being able to use your talents and your gifts to help other people do the same, which is extraordinary. I think it's, it's a really valuable thing that you're doing and, um, and excited that, uh, that you're here sharing it with our audience as well. So because I know we have a lot of people tuning in that also have a lot of amazing gifts that want to share it, but have these, this dilemma, right? It's the subconscious programming that money's bad, or if I make money offering spiritual services, you know, I'm doing something wrong. And we both know I've had to overcome that subconscious limiting beliefs as well. And, uh, you know, we both know that that's not true. The reality is that we all deserve abundance, and if we're doing good things for people in a good way, then why don't we get to enjoy that abundance and be able to share more of those gifts with more people, right? So yeah. I want to ask you, though, um, the clients that you work with, what are what would you say is the number one thing, the number one most common thing you find that your clients struggle with in the beginning? 
Mm. Yeah, it's the money thing. <laughs> it's definitely the money thing because, and it's tied into self worth. So, this is interesting because you can't really break them apart, they, they go together. Because if you felt you were worthy, you would know that the abundance is supposed to come to you. So there's this little bit of self-worth. And I remember having a conversation with a cousin of mine. This is probably like 15 years ago. And I had done the Wall Street thing and did very well financially there. And she actually asked me, she said, how do you do it? Like how, like, how do you create this money? How do you, how do you make it happen? And I'm like, well, what do you mean how? Like, I'm, I'm deserve it. I'm supposed to have it. And she, it, it, remember that answer blew her away. So it is the disconnect of knowing that you deserve and that it's okay. Because I think what creeps in with the money things, we have all this programming that our friends and family and society have told us about money. And that programming kind of sit in these limiting beliefs about how it's bad and that people with money do bad things. And, and there's such a, I could go on for days about that. And then people love to throw out the Bible quotes about, you know, the, the getting to heaven through the eye of the needle with the camel and all that stuff. And it's like, but if you really read it all, that's not what it all means. And if you actually go into, you know, if we talk Bible stuff, if you look at the new Testament, like Jesus is all about, abundance if you really read what's there and the people have been conditioned to think that they're not supposed to be abundant and because they're not worthy of it and so the the biggest thing when people come in they have these amazing gifts it's getting them over the hurdle of knowing that they deserve the abundance that is actually their birthright to be abundant how do you and do that? How do you get your clients to that point, to that understanding? Because that's not an easy thing to do. No, that's why my program is 12 weeks. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, 12 weeks to overcome a lifetime of limiting conditioning, that's, that's not a bad deal. <laughs> I know. Right. It is, um, you know, for some people it happens faster than others because sometimes it is just so ingrained. What, what's amazing is that, and I'm so blown away by what I've created. So the program is called spiritual biz Boot Camp, And when they come in, I have an entire team and my entire team are some of the most amazing light workers I have ever met. Like these, this team is incredible and they've all just shown up for me, which has been very cool. They usually end up coming through my program and then working on the team because they're just so incredible. We're like, you're not going anywhere. And so the entire team actually works with the person that comes in to remove at an energetic and cellular level, these beliefs out of their body, as well as at a mental level. And then with the teachings and the vibration and really the space that we're holding for them, because we see them in their absolute highest light of being able to create whatever they desire and knowing that they can. It's, it's really showing people that you believe in them because I think that's, it sucks to say this, but that's probably the, the biggest issue out there is that no one believes in anyone else. And they've been told by family and friends that they're not worthy. And so when you give someone a container, a space, whether it's 12 weeks or eight weeks or whatever it turns out to be, because I show my clients how to create eight week programs to really hold the same space for their clients. When you can hold someone in an energetic space over that time frame and show them that they can be the best version they can be and that you believe in them and that you know they can do it and that they have all the support that they need to achieve that that's, that's what, that's kind of really what they need. They need permission to know that they are worth it and that they can. And then we show them the mechanics of how to do it. You know, the, the left brain stuff, but it's really mostly the energetic space of holding that for them to say, yes, we all here on the team believe you can do it. We can see it. And because we're all intuitive, we can see it or we don't allow you into the program. <laughs> we're actually fairly picky about that because we have to be able to see that they are going to serve. And then you just connect the dots with that money's just energy. And if you're going to give someone energy and change their life, which all my clients do, my clients do incredible work in changing people's lives, you're going to change someone's life, then there needs to be an energy exchange so that things are in balance because everything in the universe is in balance. 
And the only time it's not in balance out in nature is when human beings get involved. But when nature is left to itself, it's in balance. Everything is, the food supply, the, the water, the plants, like everything just, it happens on its own. It's, the problem is when we get involved. So it's being able to show them that that abundance that, that is there for you and that the energy exchange that you're doing has to be in balance. Follow what nature shows us and know that it's okay to have that abundance. I, I like your, your, your metaphor and, and connecting to nature being totally harmonious and abundant. And, you know, I was, as you were talking earlier, I was just thinking like, well, I mean, just look at an apple tree, for example, how many seeds it produces, how many apples it produces, how many leaves it drops to nourish itself. It's, it's abundant. It's infinite. It just keeps going and going and going, right? It's never ending. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, I think we, if I could add anything to, to your metaphors that I would say that, you know, the only, or, or to your example, is that um, when, things get at, when things get into discord, when humans get involved, it's because we haven't really learned yet how to live in harmony with nature. Whereas if you study indigenous tribes around the world, which I've been blessed to actually spend a lot of time with indigenous tribes, the ones who do live in harmony with nature, they actually support the ecosystem. They support that abundance. They support that natural, holistic, harmonious environment to work you know, together cooperatively. And it's a beautiful thing. And humans, we have that ability to do it if we're not letting ourselves get in the way and get out of balance of this give and take, right? There has to be a balance of giving, but there also has to be a balance of receiving. We're doing too much of one or either, uh, or not giving enough, or not receiving enough, then we're out of balance, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's a great example, knowing that the indigenous tribes can do that. They do do that. They can be in balance with nature, and that's what we need to do. That's where we need to get back. Those of us that are in more of the first world and second world countries, we need to get back into balance with ourselves and with nature to make this all work. Mm -hmm. So true. What, what commonality do you see with your most successful clients that contribute to their success? It's just the decision. Like, truly, it's the decision that this will work. They make a choice and they just stay focused. Because it's interesting, the clients that I work with, they're shifting identities. They have been, even if they have a business, let's just say they have a business or a podcast and they've been kind of stepping out and they're, they're sharing their information somewhere and people kind of know them. But when you come through boot camp, my goal is to really create spiritual leaders, not just someone that has a business with some spiritual gifts, which is awesome. But how do we now make you a spiritual leader? It's like, I have a year long program that my clients come through and those that, that group, I'm grooming them literally to be the next leaders that are going to shift consciousness on the planet. And so that group, I see them and I see what they do. And it really is a decision to move forward and a decision to also allow the abundance to come in. It's the allowance and it is getting that self-worth thing down a bit so that they just allow it to flow in. They are the most connected with source because when we're not in flow of abundance and we're not seeing ourselves as worthy, it's because we're disconnected from source or God or whatever name you want to use. But that's, that's it. So the more connected with source you are, the more abundant you are and you know that you're worthy. I mean, we were created by source. Like it's flowing through us. So how could we say we're not worthy? That's the human. That's the brain getting in the way of all the stuff that we've been told, all those self-limiting beliefs. So the clients that succeed the fastest and the most are the clients that allow it to happen. They make the decision and then they allow and they keep their connection with source instead of falling into the language of I can't or I don't have or this won't work or what if because all of that language just lowers their vibration and just slows them down it's like standing in mud and trying to run it doesn't work but when they can release that language and they can just make the decision this will work and trust in source then everything opens up for them yeah that trust is so important right it comes back to 
you know, it's that vicious cycle. If you don't believe in yourself or you don't have self-worth, it's going to be hard to trust yourself and to even trust others who are trying to guide you. So there's a sense of opening to the unknown and opening and awakening to that inner knowledge, that inner wisdom within each one of us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the trust. It's the faith, it's the faith and the process faith in the universe. It's which is scary for most people. <laughs> It's so true, stepping out of that comfort zone, but that's what it takes to succeed at anything. So yeah. you, you talk about um, teaching people how to make money while you meditate. Like, so is this the, hey, let's go live in a cave and meditate, and then, you know, the angels will bring us money kind of thing? <laughs> no. Okay, <laughs> well, I didn't think lovely. so. <laughs> money angels, I love that. Um, <laughs> But it's really, uh, it's, this is more, this, this is a little more of the left brain side of stuff of showing them how to set up a business where they can have the passive income as well as being able to scale their business. Because I think that's the thing that people are actually really afraid of as they think of the entrepreneur idea. They're like, I don't want to work so hard. And it's like, well, admittedly in the beginning, you're creating a business. Like, yes, you have to give it nourishment and you have to, you have to feed it with energy and love and money and everything else because you're creating something new. But there is a way, there is a turning point where in your business you can start to, uh, if you do it right, step back a smidget in certain areas so that the money starts to come in like literally I made that on the call with you guys and I wasn't directly involved. So that's how <laughs> you make money while you meditate. <laughs> Right. So basically you're, you're saying, look, you can still do your meditation. You can still do your spiritual practice. You can still live the life you want to live and run a successful business. Right. I mean, I also find it is true. No matter how many times you may hear it, how corny it may sound to some people, it's been so true in my life for 14 years now that if you find something you love to do, then you're willing to work your ass off for it. You're willing to work hard for it. And a lot of the time, I'd say 80% of the time, it doesn't feel like work. You know, this is part of our business, having this interview with you, sharing this with all of our listeners. And yet this is not work. This is fun. It's dynamic. It's engaging. I love it. I enjoy it. I can see in your face, you do as well. And this is part of growing your business too, right? So you find things that really you enjoy, you're passionate about, you love, and I mean, you can work for hours and hours and hours a day and it's, it doesn't fit. Sometimes it feels like work, sit down, answer, <laughs> answering the phone, sending emails, things I don't always want to do. Sure. There's going to be that kind of work involved, but that's part of it. Right. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, going back to the metaphor I use sitting in a cave, meditating and hoping that money is going to come to you. That's just not how life works. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although you do, you do need to make sure you're meditating, yes. whatever that meditation type thing is. Otherwise, it doesn't come to you. So there's that balance of being point. able to, to set back. I find what's fascinating with me is that when we go to do the next level, so you, you, know, you hit a plateau in your business and you're like, okay, here's the next goal. How do we get to the next level? That I actually must do less for that to happen. Mm. Because the more I do in the physical, the slower it manifests. And when I stop doing so much and I sit back and I just start being as a human being, then that's when things start to kind of fall into place. And it happens very quickly. If you start, if you get that down and you get that, that practice down and that connection with source down, then things just start to show up really fast, which is really cool to watch. <laughs> that's a beautiful point. Yeah. What three things would you say that a spiritual coach or entrepreneur can do to take their business to the next level? Um, yeah, they need to, the money shifting is huge. You have to be able to be open to receiving and just knowing that that energy exchange has to be there. If you don't have an energy exchange, you, it doesn't work. It's, we failed, right? We're not in balance like nature's in balance. So it's, it's being able to be open to be receiving because that's probably the number one thing that spiritual entrepreneurs have an issue with because they think they should give that gift away for free. So there has to be an energy exchange to really be open to receiving. Um, the second thing I would say would be having the guidance, having the right mentor because I know my business skyrocketed when I got a mentor. Like it just, it's interesting because all the success that I'd had on wall street and building other businesses and doing stuff, I never really had a mentor. I just 
picked it up and I studied, studied my rear end off to understand things, but I didn't necessarily have a, a guidance. And when I, when I finally decided that that's what I needed, I'd hit a point where I was like, okay, I clearly can't figure this next step out on my own. I need assistance. So when I did that and I invested in myself, that was huge. I think it was huge not only getting that information, but the act of investing in yourself and putting that energy into you. Most people don't invest in themselves. They, they'd rather give their money to a friend or buy something, but they don't really invest in the betterment of themselves and what they can do with their business. So I would say that that's the other really big thing if they want to quantum leap that part. And then number three, what would number three be? Number three is um, just also knowing that you're connecting with souls of the past. And I know that sounds weird. And some of my listeners might be like, well, wait a minute. But I, I believe that as a spiritual leader, what you're doing is you're really connecting with the souls that have known you before. And to be able to do that, you have to be able to speak their language. You have to be able to connect with them. And, and that's my version of marketing. So what I show my, my clients is that it's not, it is marketing, but it's a totally different animal than what most people would teach from like a marketing, like this is how you market your program and how you sell it. So you know, knowing that they have to connect with their clients and souls of the past that they've had some connection with in a past life, a past density, dimension, whatever you want to call it, there's been some connection. And now what they're here to do is to um, speak to them in a way that they can hear them, that they can recognize them. So it's that recognition that brings them there. And then they recognize you and serve them at a very high level, not just sell them some program, but really serve them and change their life. You end up not selling anything. So that's the big worry of spiritual entrepreneurs. I have to sell, I have to market, I have to sell. And when you're, when you're really connecting with those souls and you're changing lives, it's not selling and it's really not marketing. You are just having a massive ripple effect on the planet. But that's a big mindset shift to, to get that down. Right, and there's absolutely a conscious way to do sales and marketing, right? It's doing it with integrity, it's doing it with honesty, it's doing it in coming from your heart. And, you know, sales is sales, however we want to call it or look at it, at the end of the day, it's sales. You can, just like money is money, or, you know, snow is snow, it's all energy and it's all how we present it, right? Like you said, yeah. you can either come at it from, you know what, I have something that's going to help somebody change their life. I should learn every possible way with integrity to help this person buy my thing that's going to help them change their life, right? So that means if, if it means, you know, fine tuning, learning some, some conscious sales, learning some conscious marketing, these things like that's another thing that people think, oh, it's bad to do marketing. It's bad to do sales. It's like, no, you're doing sales and marketing every day of your life. If you have yeah. children, you're doing sales with your children. If you're talking about a movie you just watched, you're doing free marketing for that movie you just watched, right? Why wouldn't you do marketing for something that is very meaningful to you and can change somebody's life? So I just want to bring that up because those are other things just like money that are a hot topic that people think are bad, and yet they're just energy just like anything else. It's how you approach it and how you apply it with the yeah. intention and the actions you take. Yep, absolutely. And it's just how you, it's how you change lives. When you can finally get that down, just like people say, oh, I don't like social media. I'm like, it's a tool. It's a tool to be able to connect with people all over the world. I have clients all over the world that I could never have connected with if I was just sitting in my house. I'm like, it's a tool and it's how you change lives. So use it. <laughs> right. So, um, I was going to say, the people who say, I don't like social media, they're usually the ones doing the selfies on Instagram and then posting about it anyway, right? So it's like, <laughs> yes, they're, they're burrito for lunch. <laughs> right, but I don't like it. So, well, don't use it then or use it for something good. So, <laughs> I don't know, I just came to my head to say it. Um, let's say you could go back 10 years or 12 or 15 or a significant point in your life. And you knew now or you knew then what you know now, what would be the one thing you would have changed then? Not out of regret or like, you know, I wish I would change this, because obviously those things are what contribute to who you are now and what you're doing now. Let's say you had the wisdom and knowledge you had now and you could make a positive change then. What would be one or two major things you would change then? 
they would catapult to where you are now maybe 10 times ahead. I think what's interesting is this isn't maybe so much a, a change. It's more of an, a greater awareness is the importance of our thoughts. And what's really fascinating is that it's something I actually had down and then lost and then got back. And so I'll explain like the ability to focus on something and manifest something. Cause I was thinking positive thoughts and everything without knowing I was thinking positive thoughts. This was not like a conscious thing, but I used to just create all the time. Like every job I had, I, I mean, I didn't, I, I don't even know how to describe how amazing my life has been just because I think about something and it shows up cause I concentrate, but I was doing it unconsciously. And then I went through my big blip through the Wall Street world where I lost consciousness, truly, of, of my being here on this planet. And then it took me a long time to get it back. It really took, there was a good stint of 10 years, I, 10, I don't know, that might be too long, but we'll call it eight years where I was, I couldn't figure out, I'm like, how did I used to do that? Like, I couldn't remember. I didn't actually know how I'd done it and I couldn't explain it to anybody. I was just like, I used to do this thing and I can't seem to do it anymore. And then I, now I realize what it was is that it's just, it's, it's the power of the subconscious. It's, and it's how powerful we are and being able to just know that, that those subconscious thoughts are how we create. That is the way we create. And so remembering that, knowing that now and being able to master my thoughts being back now and being able to do that then things start to just pop up and then when something doesn't show up that I'm looking for then I have to say oh, what what have I been thinking that might be a little bit off and then I make the adjustment so really knowing that our thoughts that's how we create so that you can manifest what you desire and it's not, I'm not talking about just stuff I'm talking about just a beautiful life and being happy control your thoughts that's the number one thing if you can master that you're in phenomenal shape Mm, wow, beautiful. You've obviously done an incredible job of that. You're doing an incredible job coaching other spiritual coaches and entrepreneurs and want to commend you and honor you for doing that, recognize you for doing that. You're obviously Thank you. touching people's lives in a, in a really meaningful way. And, and I, I'd love to see you reach your goal of 5,000 entrepreneurs and 5,000 businesses in five years because those 5,000 are going to touch who knows how many hundreds, thousands, or millions more. So that's, uh, it's been fascinating talking with you. We have one final question here in a moment, which Derek will ask you. But before we do, how do people, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? And what's the best place for them to, to start? Either sure. start with their business, start with coaching with you, get to the next level. What would you suggest? Yeah. So probably the most interesting way is that I have a, a free training that's the five shifts that my clients have been using to get to their six figure businesses. And they can find that at spiritualbizsuccess.com. And um, it's awesome. So it's a free training. It's like 45 minutes long and it's all these little mindset shifts that you need to do to be able to be successful. So spiritual biz success will take them right to that. And then they can just find me Kimberly Masca.com. And I have a Facebook group and I'm kind of all over the place, but if you kind of poke around, but really to see like, how I speak and what I teach and really get those ideas flowing spiritualbizsuccess.com. They can sign up for that training there, watch it at their leisure. And, um, that's, it's, it's, I get people that will email and say, Oh my God, I took so many notes and I have stickies everywhere. And, and if I talk to someone, sometimes they know it better than I do. They like know exactly what I said. <laughs> and so there's a lot of good uh, shifting that happens in there. Well, we'll put those links in the show notes below. So everyone tuning in, make sure you check out those websites. And final question here. What's the number one thing that people can do right now to activate their greatness within? Ah, I think really just, I hate to just say meditate because I know people go, oh, I don't want to meditate. Mm -hmm. But it's just finding that moment of peace and knowing your connection with source. Whatever that word is for you, source, whether it's God or Allah or whatever that word is that you're using, to know that that flows within you. And in that instance, even if it's just 30 seconds of knowing and feeling it, to feel amazing about it, because that's the power that we can use to create. So it's just a, a moment of just feeling that 
and just having that knowing and then continue with your day. And if you can do that a few times throughout the day, then those thoughts that are keeping you where you are, which is where you don't want to be, will start to subside. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. And everyone tuning in, go meditate. That's it. That's <laughs> yes. the key right there, right? I'm, I'm glad you brought it up though, because it is. It's much as we want to avoid it, it is one of the best things we can do. So thank you for bringing that up. Sure. Thank you for sharing what you do. Thank you for for being a leader and coaching other coaches and uh, everyone tuning in, go check out the websites in the link below. And um, yeah, appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. You guys had some great questions that I don't normally get asked. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. That's it for today's episode. Our hope and desire is that you get as much out of these interviews and episodes as we do. Each week, you can count on us being here to help you activate the greatness that's already within you. And we can all do that by continuing to develop and grow our minds, bodies, emotions, and connection to a higher purpose. Please make sure to share this with your friends on Facebook, iTunes, Twitter, and Instagram. Tag Crane Factor and use the hashtag activating greatness so we can continue growing this community together and changing the world for the better. And a huge shout out to our sponsors for making this show possible. Head over to performancetea.com to try their recovery, balance, focused, and energy teas. These teas are made from incredible healing herbal plants that help your body heal, gives you natural energy, helps prevent disease, and help you feel better in every way. Again, that's performance tea, that's T-E-A, performancetea.com, and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. That code works on their website, and it also works on Amazon. Again, ACTIVATE15, and you'll get a 15% discount off of these amazing teas. We appreciate you tuning in and for supporting our sponsors who make this show possible. Remember, you already have greatness within you. You just need to activate it. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you on the next episode.